أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس so alhamdulillah we come towards the conclusion of the of the 30th juz now alhamdulillah and we'll conclude today with both of, of the the last two surahs surah al-falaq and surah al-nas last week we did surah al-ikhlas and there is a connection between the last two surahs and surah al-ikhlas and the Messenger of Allah would many of times read the last three surahs, the last two as well. And many, many narrations say that the Messenger of Allah would add Surah Al-Ikhlas to the last two as well, make them three. And he would seek Allah's protection when he would read them. So the, these surahs are, are, are very, and they're both similar, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas are both very similar. Some of the Sahaba almost considered them one. And when they would read, they would not make uh, do basmalah. They would not recite bismillah between them. But that was to show that they're very similar and that their meaning is quite the same in r regarding to what they are related to. And so the one of the connections which one of the Mufassirun mentions of Surah Al-Falaq 2 and Surah al Surah Al-Nas 2, Surah Al-Ikhlas before it is that before it Allah Ta'ala is asking uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and the people to recognize Tawheed. What is Tawheed? Recognize the Aqeedah of our Deen. To recognize the Aqeedah, the foundation of our Deen. And so after a person recognizes this, understands how big of a responsibility it is and how deep this knowledge is, that the person will start to seek the help of Allah, the aid of Allah, and specifically the protection of Allah. The protection of Allah from other bad, right? We, not, we don't just, a lot of times people think that we seek Allah's protection only from perhaps physical uh, you know catastrophes physical dangers or from uh, dangers of magic right? always magic dangers of magic or dangers of this but what about the dangers that a person can face when things creep into their aqidah when things creep into their faith right when the whispers whisper to man regarding their faith what about that? Right? So people have to seek protection, Allah's protection from that as well. And so Allah Ta'ala is saying that you are you believe in the you, you sincerely believe in the belief of Allah, uh, belief that Allah Ta'ala has taught to, to, to mankind the correct belief. So now seek the protection of your Lord in carrying that belief. And so in the, the, the first ayah of the surah, Allah Ta'ala says, Qul, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. And falaqa is to break something, right? So to break something in half. So the, the, the falaq is the daybreak. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak and so the the messenger of Allah we know what was asked from the disbelievers in the tafsir is mentioned of the last surah that the messenger of Allah was asked by the disbelievers that why don't you describe your Lord for us is he made from gold or silver and so the messenger of Allah in this surah is being told that Seek Allah's protection from 
these uh, uh, comments and these questions. Seek Allah's protection from these comments and these questions. And so seek the, 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 seek the protector of the creator of the, of the day. Now, uh, a discussion which comes up and some of the Mufassirun will, will mention regarding this surah. It's regarding seeking protection and what's the proper way of, of, of doing it. And very simply, right, the way we should, uh, a sim simple way that a, a person should go about it is that seeking the protection of Allah Ta'ala through certain practices is fine. As long as those practices have foundations. Right? So this is very important. As long as those practices have foundations, then it is correct. So there are times where the Messenger of Allah was bothered by something or fell ill. And Jibreel والسلام, would come and recite things to him. Right? Either that being Quran or other words. And there are examples which are given by the Mufassirun. For example, would 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 say that you know it's just a dua, but that is what it is, right? That's why there's no need to uh, there's no need to make it anything beyond that. So, for example, you'll hear you'll hear, and this is very important. You'll hear so many things. Oh, read this 24 times, and uh, then you know read it backwards seven times, and then blow it on your left shoulder, and then look down at your right toe. You'll hear like strange practices like this, right? These are, one should stay, one should refrain from this type of stuff. There are very simple recitations of Qur'an and du'as which the Messenger of Allah directly gave us. Number one, they can't be anything stronger than that. So hold on to these practices foundationally. For example, when the Messenger of Allah would enter upon a, a sick person, he would say, Oh Allah, you know, take the, the pain away, Adhi bil baas, Rabban nas. Right. right, that oh Allah take away the, the, the pain, the suffering, you are the Lord of the people, give, give, uh, uh, give cure ishfi anta shafi la shafiya illa ant, that uh, you give the cure, you, for you are the one who cures and no one can cure beside you, no one can cure beside you, or as it comes by Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he would himself say, a dua, for example, the dua is A'udhu bi kalimatillah al-tamma Right? Min kulli ayn al-lamma wa kulli shaytanin wa hamma And, and the, 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 the wording for this dua specifically would come in, in different forms There are different, uh, you know, wor uh, words which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi used However, he would say these duas, oh, you know, I'm seeking protection in the words of Allah Ta'ala from every evil, from the, from the evil of the eye, and from every catastrophe, and from the devils, right? And these are things which are, you know, reported by Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi as well. They're very important du'as that, you know, the scholars would very, recite very frequently right, throughout the day. And it's narrated the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu would not only read it for himself, but he would hold Hassan and Hussein radiallahu anhuma, and he would say, Uaidukuma that I'm seeking Allah's, I'm putting you in the refuge of Allah, in the protection of Allah. Right? I am putting you in the protection of Allah Ta'ala, both of you. And then he would say that I'm reading the same words that Ibrahim والسلام, would say when he would seek protection for Ismail and Ishaq right? So now what are we learning from this? The Messenger of Allah is also taking words which pass down through a tradition, through the Prophets. Right? So we should also only take down what is passed down to us from the Prophets, not just from anywhere. There's another hadith, for example, that the that the Messenger of Allah once a Sahabi came to the Messenger of Allah and he was ill. And the illness was so bad that it was causing him, it was a sahabi by the name of Uthman ibn al-As al-Thaqafi And he says that the illness was so bad that my body started to deteriorate and the function of my body was stopping. 
So I was brought to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the Prophet of Allah وسلم, said to me that say Bismillah in the name of Allah. I seek protection bi Izzatillah. Awud bi Izzatillah. I seek protection in the Izzah, the glory of Allah, wa qudratihi and His power from every evil min sharrima ajid, from every evil that I am feeling, every you know, every evil that I'm finding. And he said to him, recite this seven times. And so I did this and Allah Ta'ala cured me. Right. And this narration is by Imam Al-Hakim Rahmatullah So, so certain narrations the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did give us a sort of uh, prescription that read this and read it seven times or do it three times or read it this many times. Right. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would read some du'as of protection before sleeping three times each. He would read some of them three, time e three times each. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that when the Messenger of Allah would find any pain or something that you know he would like to uh, seek, he would like to seek Allah's protection in that situation. Right? If there was anything, shay'an, if there was anything that he would uh, find as an issue, then he would recite Surah Al-Ikhlas and Mu'awwidatain. So the, the, the uh, last two surahs, they're also given the name Mu'awwidatain and Mu'awwidatain. Right? Mu'awwidatain, those that give protection. Right? The name of those surahs that give protection. And Mu'awwidatain, those which are sought protection through. And so he would, uh, sometimes he would recite this and then he would blow into his hands and he'd rub his body. And this is a very famous narration, and we, you know, we we heard this narration, and we read it from other uh, many books of hadith as well. But the Messenger of Allah also did, right? He did say that any any person who, you know, he he dives too much into certain practices, then those people will never see, uh, seek, uh, those people will never uh, be able to properly perform tawakkul upon Allah Ta'ala. Lam yatawakkal ala Allah. Uh, the Messenger of Allah said, certain people who do certain things, they will not be from the people who do tawakkul upon Allah. Meaning again, people who are, you know, you tie strings on a door, or you hold onto a doll, or you do certain things again, which the Messenger of Allah did not call towards, but rather the you know the people of ignorance at that time or the people of ignorance at this time, they hold on to those practices uh, and then they they do those things. And again, uh, another narration: the Messenger of Allah would, at some times, he would blow on his body whenever he would complain from any or he would feel any pain in his body, and he would read. The Mu'awwidat, referring to the last three Qul, the last three surahs, and then he'd rub his hands and he'd rub his body. He'd rub starting from his face and going all the way down. When the Messenger of Allah would take his, would uh, lie down on his bed at the night, he would recite the Mu'awwidatain, the last two uh, surahs, and then he would Again, blow onto his hands and then rub his complete body. So doing this practice is, is proven through, through several different ahadith. And uh, you know, doing so is, is, is good. In the, next, in the next ayah, or perhaps uh, we can still pay attention to this ayah that the, Allah Ta'ala is using the word Rabb. Right? So he uses the word Rabb in this Surah as well as in the in the next surah, seeking protection. Now, obviously, you're seeking protection from the Lord, but specifically in the Rabbil, in the Rabb, the the quality of the Lord, which is to uh, care for mankind, right? Which is to uh, you know take care of, take care of and sustain the existence of mankind. So the Rabb, the sustainer, caretaker, one who overwatches. 
so taking uh, seeking the protection of Allah Ta'ala from him being our caretaker as one would seek from a caretaker one seeks protection we seek protection from Allah Ta'ala in the next ayah Allah Ta'ala says min sharri ma khalaq from the evil of what he created so some of the Sahaba said this is referring to Iblis in specific and others said rather this ayah by its wording is alluding to generality so it is in general to all forms of evil some of the uh, so some of the narrations say that the surah was revealed at a time it's a madani surah and the surah was revealed at a time that there was magic which had taken place and some of the narrations say that it affected the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so then this surah was it was re revealed along with the the next surah this is one narration as well which is there so min sharri ma khalaq but this the mufassirun it say that it refers to all forms of evil whether it is the you know animals perhaps that can attack a person or it is from the jinn or it is from any form of danger which could uh, which could afflict a person any form of danger then that person can uh, it would come under this ayah min sharri ma khala wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab and from the evil of the gathering of darkness when it overspreads so ghasiq is that which it is the refers to the night when its darkness becomes intense so ghasaqul layl for example so the the, the 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 darkness of the night is 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 called the ghasiq and waqab is when a, when there is one thing enters inside of another until it completely vanishes until it completely vanishes so when the when the night comes about and the you know the the evils of the night spread that Allah Ta'ala protect from that as well and so the when the darkness fills the eye right waqab also refers to when something completely fills the eye so when the darkness fills the eye and you know the the evil of the night is apparent right? there's a, there's a certain feeling that a human naturally gets during the day versus during the night naturally during the night <clears throat> every human being wants to seek protection every human being wants shelter in the night people do not exit their homes in the night people stay in their homes so referring to that mishari ghasiq idha waqab from the evil of the gathering of of the gathering darkness when it overspreads wa min sharri an-nafathati fil uqad in from the evil of sorceresses who blow upon knots so then allah taala is speaking about here the act of the the people who take a part in impermissible acts of of magic and in specific this act at the time of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi was known that certain women would hold on to knots and they would do certain practices to them with the intention to harm certain people and so the the to, to seek protection from this is also right it's also we do seek protection from this as well and so the 
the next ayah Allah Ta'ala says وَمَنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ And from the evil of an envier when he envies. The evil of an envier when he envies. And this one is very important. This is very, very common, very, and very subtle. That when a person envies, when a person has jealousy towards another person, how that harms. So much so that Allah Ta'ala is mentioning here, directly in this surah along with the other things. We never think about that aspect. However, a lot of times, and you know, I'm really just because of the superstitions and because of so many times people come and the first thing that they want to do is they want to, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I was doing very well in my life and then I had a cousin and I think it's because of them now my life has went down. Right? So, you know, we seek protection from these things, but we, we're, our, the point of this is not so that we point fingers to other people or that we think that the first possible uh, reason why I'm seeing a trial in my life is because of a relative of mine or because of someone who is close to me, right? So, min sharri hasidin, in general, the envier, a person who is jealous, to seek the protection of Allah Ta'ala from hmm, those things. And we'll uh, move on to the next surah. In the next surah, Allah Ta'ala says, so in this surah, Allah Ta'ala said, Allah Ta'ala says, say I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak. So we recite, A'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq. And after that, there are one, there's one general form of evil, which is all the general, which Allah ta'ala, all the evil which Allah has created. And after that, there's the evil of the night, the evil of the sorcerers, and the evil of the jealous person. In the next surah, Surah Al-Nas, Allah Ta'ala mentions one form of evil, but right, three descriptions of himself, which we seek protection in. So Allah Ta'ala says, we start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of all people. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. And so over here direct, this surah now is directed more towards the evils which may come towards people, from people. A'udhu bi rabbin nas. I seek refuge in the Lord of the, of the people. Malikin nas. King of all people, Ilahin Nas, God of all people. So Rab, Rububiya is different, Uluhiya is different. And the specifics of that can become lengthy. However, Rab in, in, in description is, is very simply the one whom is sustaining, taking care of other beings. Ilah is the being which is worshipped. The being which is celebrated, worshipped, that is Ilahin Nas. Malik, in, Malik is, is very simple, that is the, the king of all people. And in this surah, we are seeking protection from Min Sharril Waswas Al Khannas, from the evil of the inciting and receding whisper. So, what does that mean? Min Sharril Waswas. So waswasa is a form of whispering. Right? So the Arabs would say when when a, when a person would get an internal thought or you know uh, a whisper from inside of themselves, then say waswasa fi nafsihi. Now waswasa, this whisper doesn't necessarily have to come from outside. Right? It can come from directly inside. But it's described as another being. Right? So any time our own self will give us a whisper towards evil, then that's another part of us. That, that, that part of us is be, de, being described as something completely separate. So a whisper coming from you, but also a different part of you. Waswasafi nafsi. And so this waswasa, right, we're aware of it. it is uh, 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 referring to the 
the whispers that come from some of the mufassirun say this is referring to a specific form of shaitan a specific form of shaitan which is known to, to, to whisper and reality is that as some of the mufassirun mentioned this is minal jinni wal ins right? as Allah Ta'ala says shayateenun insi wal jinn there are devils from people and there are devils from the, the jinn right? so seeking the protection from the evil whispers of people as well as the devils this is what this ayah is referring to and the the khannas this is this is referring to one who the 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 quality of the of, of, of a being whose habit is to do khanas khanas is when a person stands away uh, one of the descriptions is a person who stands a little bit far but is continuously blowing right? is continuously blowing or continuously trying to affect something which is on a distance so khannas alladhi yuwasusu fi sudurin nas that which is who whispers in the chests of the people so the, the area which is directly affected is the chest of the people. Inside the chest is the, the heart, the qalb which is affected. Why does Allah Ta'ala say the chest? Because the, the gate to the heart is the chest. So many of times Allah Ta'ala is speaking about the heart, but He addresses the chest. So the chest is the gateway to, to the heart. Fi sudurin nas. Whispers in the chests of people min al jinnati wan nas from the whispering jinn and the whispering people right? so seeking protection from people and jinn right? and so with that we we conclude with the the last two surahs again it ties with surah al ikhlas very easily which is to seek protection firstly of our faith of our belief our belief system and then everything else along with that from our bodies, our wealth, our families, as well as our, our health and everything else as well. So with that we ask Allah Ta'ala that He you know, accept from us the completion of this juzu that we, we tried our best to do. That He forgive us for any shortcomings in our attempt to try to understand it. And that He allow us to always return right, just because we finished this juzu. We could do this juz again, starting again from the beginning and learn completely different things. This is the beauty of the Qur'an, right? So we could do this complete juz again and talk about things from different, different discussion, uh, different, different angles. May Allah Ta'ala accept from us and may He forgive us for any of our shortcomings and give us deeper understanding and knowledge of that which we are trying to learn from His book. وَأَخِرِ دَوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لَعَبِ الْعَالَمِينَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ بِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ بِحَمْدِهِ نشهد لا اله الا الله ونستغفرك اللهم ونتوب اليك جزاك ال